Perfect timing, Professor. If you don't mind, I have a favor I'd like to ask of you. It's in regard to sword training. Not for myself, but... Well... To be honest, I've been teaching swordsmanship to the orphans at the monastery for a while now. Some of them saw me sparring with the knights one day. They started pestering me to teach them. They were so earnest, I couldn't help but oblige. There's much I wish to show them, but due to my own studies and training, I'm afraid my time is rather limited. Which brings me to my favor. Your swordsmanship is unmatched. I hate to ask this of you, but... Would you consider lending me a hand? Thank you, truly. I am in your debt, and I always repay my debts, I'll have you know. All of these children lost their families and homes to war or illness. This may sound a bit arrogant, but I feel it's my responsibility to help them. I lost my parents without warning, too. In that way, we're the same. In Dusker, I lost my father, stepmother, and closest friends. I didn't have many allies at the castle after that. In truth, I had only to do for companionship. I once had people I could confide in. Family, friends, instructors, even the royal soldiers. But they were all taken away from me four years ago. Ah, but there were those outside the castle walls I was close to, such as Rodrigue. <laughs> Pardon my rudeness. I meant Lord Rodrigue. He is my father's old companion and the father of Felix. On the occasions he would visit the capital, He'd take me out hunting, or on long horse rides. While Dudu is like a brother to me, Rodrigue is more like a second father. It might sound ridiculous, but... He's the kind of man I hope to become one day. Someone who helps others. Someone who can reach out and save a lost soul. Oh, please, accept my apologies for boring you with my life story. In any case, don't forget your promise, Professor. I'm counting on you. Hey Felix, you free? You don't look very busy. Let's go find some girls to chat with. Chat with them by yourself. You're interrupting my training. Hey, come on. Don't talk like that. How long have we known each other? Long enough, if you ask me. We only know each other because of our parents' friendship. I didn't have a say in it. Is that how it went? Huh. I remember it more like you always following me around. Whenever there was something wrong, like you lost to your brother, or you fought with Dimitri, you'd come crying to me. You were so meek and pure back then. Cute even. Like a baby brother. And that's enough. What? I said that's enough! Hey, sorry. I just came to see if you wanted to pick up some girls. I didn't mean to get on your nerves. Look, you've been getting on my nerves for years. I've tried to be patient with you, but I'm tired of holding my tongue. You're reckless in your personal affairs and in battle, and you're always prattling on about women. Well, if a man sees a pretty girl, he can't just let her pass by without commenting. That's just rude. You're insatiable. Do you ever stop? Certainly not to practice your sword technique. You always skip training. And you never consider how your actions hurt others, or how you hold them back. That's never my intention. Come on, you, you know me better than that. I'm not really... Look, if that's the impression I've given you, then I'm sorry. Hmm. Felix, there you are. I've been looking all over for you. Time for our tactics lecture. You'll be there, won't you? Those things are such a waste of time. Nonsense. You're going to be there. Must I? Why is this such a chore? You went last time. Though you did all you could to disrupt things, as I recall. Brazenly rambling on about clear-cutting a nearby forest to secure a marching route. 
and attacking an enemy base, stealing their horses. You were incredibly disruptive and even rude. I was offering my honest opinion. Then you left before we were finished. What do you suppose happened after that? I have no idea. Well, the conversation got quite lively. We all began breaking down the viability of your somewhat maniacal plan. And apparently, similar tactics have been used to turn the tides of historic battles. That may be an exaggeration. Successful armies must be able to handle unexpected situations. That starts with weapon mastery and creative tactics. If you didn't have so much battlefield experience, you wouldn't be capable of such unique strategies. Which is why we need people like you. People who think creatively to lead the army. Now you're just massaging my ego. When have you ever minded? We need you there. Just come on. Hello, Ingrid. Can I have just a teeny tiny moment of your time? Sure. I can spare a moment or two. I was wondering, do you have any interest in fashion and makeup and stuff like that? I haven't the time to bother with such frivolities. As long as basic hygiene is being met, then I'm happy. Oh, but you're missing out on something so fun. I mean, it's not like you need it, of course. You've got beautiful bone structure, lovely hair, long legs, but aren't you interested in trying something new? Um, well, thank you. I suppose I do find it all somewhat intriguing. But my time is precious to me, and my focus is on knighthood. Taking time to paint my face simply isn't a top priority. Sure, but imagine if you could combine the two and become the most fabulous knight ever. Okay, maybe I'm taking it too far. I know knights don't necessarily need a ton of makeup or things like that for the job. I'm just saying, I really think you'd enjoy it if you opened your mind to it. All I'm talking about is a light touch. I can see it now. Your gorgeous face done up with a delicate application of makeup. The fabulous knight who everyone looks up to and wants to be. Um, well, maybe? I guess. That does sound mostly harmless. Hooray! Okay. We don't have a moment to lose. Here, take this makeup kit, play around with the colors, and see what speaks to you. Now, wait just a... I actually got that little kit as a gift the other day, and I wasn't sure what to do with it because I already have that one. It's a limited palette, but I think it fits the look you're going for perfectly. I actually never agreed to start putting that stuff on my face, Annette. What? Oh. Well then, I guess this whole kit will have to go to waste. I'll just throw it away like the garbage it is. You're throwing it away? I can't just stand by and let something go to waste. <sighs> okay. All right. Thank you. We can do this. <laughs> That's the spirit! Oh, and I'm happy to help you learn to apply it too. Come on, let's go to my room. I have some brush techniques to show you before you get started. Now... Don't get carried away. Ugh. She played me like a fiddle. I thought I heard someone. Are you here to train? Get a train with me. Waving the sword around alone is boring. And I'm tired of crossing swords with worthless opponents. But you seem like a worthy adversary. I've always been interested in your technique. You learned from the former captain of the Knights of Seros, and traveled Fodlin fighting as a mercenary. Good sparring partners like you don't grow on trees. But know that I will beat you, and I will surpass your strength. Why? Hmm. I never really thought about that. I learned to thrust a sword before I learned to write my name. Of course, my upbringing wasn't unique. 
That's how it is for all children in my country. You're no use if you can't swing a sword, however mighty your crest may be. It was the perfect environment for me. I could live free of stodgy values and virtues. Grow strong so you may live, and live to grow stronger. That's what I was taught. Now I'm intrigued by your fighting style, and by who you really are. But that's enough idle chatter. Take out your sword. My mind is emptied of all but the thrill of the challenge. Phew. Oh, Professor, are you training too? I was just about to finish up, but if you want to join in, I can stick around a while longer. Oh no, it's fine. Just do your thing. Don't mind me. Come on, don't be shy. Phew. I'm beat, but we're finally done. training when you got here and I finished right alongside you. Guess I outlasted you, huh? Speak for yourself. I'm always looking to improve. By the way, Professor, something I wanted to ask. Are you really Captain Gerald's kid? That's a pretty detached tone to take about your own family. What's your opinion of him, then? You must look up to him, at least. Hmm. It doesn't sound like you really appreciate him. You didn't even know until you came here that he used to lead the Knights of Saros, did you? If it weren't for him, you wouldn't be half the person you are now. You probably never even thought about how lucky you are. Oh, okay, this really bothers me. Listen up. I don't care if you're the teacher and I'm the student. I'm going to outshine you. I know you were some famous mercenary before you came here, but let me tell you something. I'm going to be better than you ever were. In fact, I'll surpass you in no time at all. So don't blink. You might miss it. to give thanks, or perhaps to ask for protection. Anyhow, I should be on my way. Um, okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't really know what to say. I'm not very good at talking to people. The truth is, I didn't interact with people too often before I came here. Oh, um, no particular reason. I'm simply not very good at it. That's just how I am. No, no need to apologize. I'm sorry, you shouldn't waste your time worrying about me. Please, just ignore me. I, um, have to be going now. Goodbye, Professor.
Ah, there you are. Can we talk? I need a favor, and you strike me as the charitable type. Touchy, touchy. I'll get right to it. I need some gold. Care to help a fellow out? Hard times all around, then. Well, it was worth a shot. Guess that debt collector traveled all the way to Garrick Mock for nothing. If I were you, I'd feel bad about leaving the poor guy hanging like that, but it is what it is. No, it's a lose-lose. I owe the church, too. That means any work I do here, they take a cut. The only way to escape my financial burden is to get clear out of Fodlin. Oh, I had... didn't mean to bring you down. No, it's just joking, yeah? We all have to decide where we belong and then fight for it. Can't let your wallet control your fate. If money was all I cared about, I never would have walked away from inheriting a baron's house. Uh, it's nothing. It was a minor house in the east of the Alliance. I like to say I stepped aside for the good of the house. Has a nicer ring to it than saying I just wasn't cut out for the gig. Or that I lacked the right temperament. My distinguished little bro took my place. Fact is, he's a much better man for the job. Don't go feeling sorry for me now. I didn't mind one bit. Truth is, I'd have been miserable in that life. Having that title was nothing but fuss. Fuss is the worst. This way of life suits me much better. And you? You showing up at Garrick Mock was a coincidence wrapped in happenstance. Your pops was a renowned mercenary leader. It can be safely assumed you'll follow in his footsteps. Don't you ever feel like that life was decided for you? Better start pondering that one real quick, pal. Why keep breathing if your life isn't your own, yeah? Well, there's a decided lack of gold here, so I'll be off now. You think on what I said. Hello, Felix. I see you're here to train as well. Go away. Just looking at your face makes me want to wretch. <laughs> With that mouth of yours, you grow more like your brother every day. Shut up. And stop walking around on your hind legs. You're not fooling me. I cannot fathom why you seem to hate me so. Because I know what you really are. A beast craving blood. A beast craving blood, am I? I assume you're speaking of the events two years ago. Last time we met outside the Academy? I am. The way you suppressed that rebellion, he was ruthless slaughter and you loved every second. I remember the way you killed your victims, how you watched them suffer, and your face, that expression, all the world's evil packed into it. That was our first battle. I remember it vividly. Oh, something wrong? Go ahead and deny it, you wild boar. I deny nothing, Felix. Well then. I suppose the Dimitri I once knew died during that slaughter in Dusker. Along with my brother. Perhaps you're right. <laughs> Hurry up and get out of my sight. I don't make a habit of talking to beasts. My goodness! Sore training again today? Don't overdo it, all right? I certainly won't, but thanks for your concern, Mercedes. It's more of a hobby than anything, so don't worry too much. A hobby? How wonderful! I would probably get tired of it, but that's just me. Hmm. Didn't you say you hope to take the sword test soon? You're right. I completely forgot that's coming up. What should I do? To be honest, I've been a bit worried as I haven't seen you at the training ground much. 
Why didn't you say something sooner if you were so worried about me? It didn't occur to me that you could have forgotten. But you're right. I should have mentioned it. As an apology, why don't you let me help you with your swordsmanship? You would do that for me? I'd really appreciate your help. Okay, but keep in mind that since we're short on time, we may have to overdo it a little. I don't like to overdo it, but if we must, I'll try my best. It's settled. Let's begin. Don't tell me you've forgotten how to hold a sword. We have our work cut out for us. I usually just hold the sword without thinking about my grip, you know? Let's see what happens now that you've shown me the proper way to handle it. <laughs> I was nervous at first, but just look at me now! Yeah! <clears throat> well, I didn't realize offering to help you would mean risking my life. Uh, I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. I just meant to swing the sword. I didn't think it would go flying like that. I'm impressed with how quickly you can dodge. Yes, I know you didn't intend to murder me. Though that scare likely took years off my life. Maybe I'm not cut out for this whole sword fighting thing. Nonsense. It's far too early to give up. The first time I picked up a sword, I was much like you. It's true that different people are better suited to different things. But if you keep at it and refuse to give up, you're certain to improve. Do you really think so? Thank you, Dimitri. It's very kind of you to... Oh! There's a rip in your cuff, Dimitri. How do you think... <laughs> it seems I didn't dodge your sword fast enough. Don't worry, I can easily repair it. I'm the one who tore it, so I'll be the one who mends it. How does that sound? No, please don't worry yourself over it. Just focus on your exam. Good morning, your highness. Getting in some early training, huh? Oh, it's not too terribly early. And what about you? <laughs> oh, I'm just going for my morning walk. Hey, maybe you'd like to join me. It's a great way to start the day. Morning walk? <laughs> Funny. Gustav always kept the same habit. You really do remind me of your father, Annette. I hear that a lot. Father was always busy with work, so he wasn't around much. But when he was home, he'd often take me with him for his walks. Annette, something's been weighing on me. Something I've done terribly wrong. Your father, he worked tirelessly. I don't know if I ever saw him take a rest. I feel as though, in a way, we stole him from you. I'll admit, it was a bit lonely growing up. But I understand. Father loved his work. No one ever doubted that. Actually, I've been thinking recently that I'd like to talk to you more, Your Highness. Oh? Any reason in particular? Father was a man of few words, both with myself and my mother. But sometimes, he would tell me about you. So, you don't really feel like a stranger to me. In a way, it's like I've known you for a long time. Almost as though you're my big brother. Your big brother? Oh, uh, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I let that slip out. That was rude of me. <laughs> no, nonsense. I promise you, I don't mind at all. It's certain that my days would have been filled with more fun if I'd had a little sister like you. What kind of things did Gustav tell you about me? I'd love to hear more on this topic. Do you really want to know? Well, for one, he used to tell this story about when you were a child and... You know what? Never mind. I have a bad feeling about where this is going. How about you forget we had this talk all together, and don't mention it to anyone? Thank you for sparring with me, Your Highness. It seems despite how hard I've worked, I'm still no match for you. Oh, there's no need for such humility. Thanks to all of your hard work, you're improving rapidly. If you're going to praise me, it should at least be after I've won a match against you. You know, Ingrid, I may be the victor when we cross spears on foot like this. But on horseback, your handling of a lance is far superior. Can't I be allowed to have my own area of expertise? No, I cannot allow that. It's my duty to get stronger, to fight with all I have in defense of the kingdom and its people. Such high stakes. <laughs> 
By the way, where did you learn that fierce jab of yours? I'm pretty sure the only other person I've seen perform that move is Glenn. So you recognized it? Yes, he shared much with me. I thought as much. I never imagined I would be on the receiving end of one of his techniques again. Glenn and I once studied under the same instructor. I've sparred with him more times than I can count. Ah, uh, yes. He was never short on praise for you. Lord Dimitri is incredible. Such skill. There's no way I'll ever outmatch him. Things of that sort. Well, now. He never said any of that to me. Well, he was Felix's brother. That family's not big on displays of affection. That is true. We spent about as much time arguing as we did training. I can't believe it's been four years since the tragedy of Dusker. Since we lost Glenn along with so many others. So it has. Time moves quickly. Things have changed so much. Despite the sorrow, I intend to become a powerful knight. A knight like yourself. And like Glenn. I will do so for the sake of my homeland, the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, and for all who have died protecting it. To that end, I hope you will spar with me again in the future, Your Highness. It would be my pleasure. After all, I value our training sessions as much as you do. Dear Goddess, please protect us. Mercedes. Oh, to do? Was there something you needed? His Highness sent me to collect you. I see. I'll be with you in just a moment. I'm almost finished here. You were praying. I was. Praying for everyone's safety, and praying for good desserts tonight, and that my next exam goes well. The Fodlan Goddess will accept prayers of any sort. <laughs> it's true. I've thought the same thing myself. That reminds me to do. Weren't you born in Dusker? Yes. Do the people of Dusker pray to the Goddess too? Dusker had a very different view of religion. Oh? In Dusker, there were many gods. The sky had a god. The earth had a god. We made offerings to the war god for victory in battle. Held feasts for the sea god to calm the waves. So your people prayed to different gods depending on what they needed? Correct. Your beliefs sound so different from ours. Tell me more. Why? Dusker is a ruin. Dusker may be gone. But you're still here. Would you tell me more about it the next time we meet? <sighs> if you insist. Really? That would be great! I'm looking forward to hearing more soon. Dusker is gone, but I'm still here. <laughs> Are you injured? No. Good. I'd have cut my way through, alone, without your assistance. My apologies. Your apologies are empty. I... I spoke out of turn. I'm sorry, Dudu. His Highness has put his faith in you. You're a valuable comrade, no matter my feelings. I... The people of Dusker... Save your breath. There were countless people like you in the capital. People who spat, threw things, insults and stones alike, whenever they pleased. Their anger was natural. I do not begrudge them. I... I see. You owe me no apology, and I will keep my distance on all other occasions. But on the field of battle, allow me to aid you. If you were to fall, His Highness would grieve. I see. Then I will accept your help on the battlefield. Understood. Hmm. 
must have left it in the library. Oh, is that Felix? Hey, hey Felix. This is a surprise. I didn't think you had much interest in books. I'm already finished with that one. You can borrow it if you'd like. No need. I was just curious who it belonged to. Why not read a few pages at least while you've got it open? I think you'd really like it. The plot is pretty different from a typical knight's tale, but it's still really good. Do you like stories about adventure and chivalry? No, I despise them. Yeah, well, have you tried reading any? You might find them really interesting. I know I do. What do you find so interesting? Well, for one thing, the knights in these stories are always gallant and brave. And they always value things like friendship, loyalty, and justice. That's the kind of knight I want to be. Ridiculous. Friendship, loyalty, justice. Only fools allow their lives to be ruled by such nonsense. Fools who get themselves killed for nothing. Only to be celebrated as heroes in books like this. Writers of these stories are worse than tyrants. They seize control of people's thoughts. That's a little much. I was only interested in... I don't care. Such blind enthusiasm is dangerous. Be more moderate in your passions. You know something, Felix? You are exactly like the knight in this story. Excuse me? On the surface, he's sarcastic and intimidating, but underneath, he's kind and cares for his friends. In the end, they become heroes together and conquer all obstacles. Disgusting. Stop looking at me like that. Oh, see, right there. That's just what I mean. You sound exactly like him. <sighs> I'm going to lend you this book, really, I insist. Just give it a read, all right? Trust me, and you can tell me what you think when you're done. Why is this happening? Here you go, Felix. Have some tea. Oh. Hmm. Sorry, but we're all out of cakes. Should I bake some more? Please, don't. Oh, your clothes are so dirty. Let me wash them for you. Mercedes, what's wrong with you? There's nothing wrong with me. I'm just making tea. Is there something wrong with that? You're not my mother. You don't have to bother with all this. I can do without it. Uh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. You just remind me so much of my little brother. I do? Yes. His name is Emil. We have different fathers, but we grew up in the same household. That is, until I was about eight or nine years old. I haven't seen him since then. Sorry to state the obvious, but I'm not your brother. I'm not Emil. Can't you find someone else to bother? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'll leave you alone. Please help yourself to more tea if you'd like. I can leave the pot. Goodbye. I am me, Felix Hugo Fraldarius. There is no one else. <laughs> Brother. Today's dinner is steak and then a cake that's yummy yum. Now it's time to fill my tummy tummy tum. Oh, this mountain of sweets and treats that I long to eat. Oh, stacks of steaks and cakes and crumbs and yums. I hope I'm not interrupting. Felix, you weren't listening, were you? I heard enough to know that you're hungry. No, I mean, well, yes. At least tell me you didn't see the dance. You have nice footwork. Get something to eat. I can take over watering the plants. You evil Felix! 
and you're shouting. You can't just spy on people while they're singing without even saying anything! It's not right! I actually did call out that I was coming in. It's not my fault you didn't hear. Well, you need to speak louder then! Oh, this is so embarrassing. And of course I was singing some silly food song I made up. I should have been singing about bears or swamp beasties. I didn't realize there were songs about bears and swamp beasties. That food song seemed to be close to your heart. Your stomach isn't far from your heart after all. Oh, you are the worst! Huh. What was that about? I better water these plants. Wouldn't want them to get thirsty, or they might start singing too. Oh, Ash. Are you here to study too? I am. It's quiet here. Easier to concentrate. <sighs> it really is. Hey, would you like to study together? We can help each other out if we get stuck. Oh, yes. We'll get a lot more done working together. This question's got me stumped. A ballista inside a castle is ready to fire at enemies outside. What angle should be used for the shot? Assume the ballista is the same as those in Garrig Mach. Ignore the effects of wind. This is for defensive strategy, isn't it? Why is it so complicated? Don't you just aim and fire? Hmm. It may help to focus on maximizing target accuracy to reduce your miss rate. To start, let's sort out the setup. Let's see, using these ballista specifications, if the ballista corals follow this trajectory, they'll hit the enemy lines, right? Oh, that makes sense, because the enemy line will be here. That's it. Okay, now try using that same technique and applying it to this other problem. If the walls are this high and the enemy lines are at that distance, oh, I think I see. I knew you'd get it. Wow, I didn't expect math of all things to be useful in a siege. This is tough. Numbers are not my strong suit. But this really is the sort of thing you have to know if you want to command troops. That's true, but not everyone is good with numbers. That's why we have tacticians do these calculations for us, or prepare them before we go to battle. A century ago, the Empire's mathematicians played a huge role in the Battle of the Wall of Fodlan. I had no idea. Hey, you really know what you're doing, Annette. You think so? Definitely. You've obviously done a lot of studying. I really admire that. I suppose I have. Studying is a necessity if you want the advantage over your enemies. <laughs> but necessity aside, it's nice to hear you say that. <laughs> Professor. Hey, Professor. What's going on? Uh, okay. Why are we being so quiet, though? Oh, look at that guy. He looks pretty suspicious. What do you think he's up to? Never mind that. Let's get him! Keep watch? It's so boring. My instincts tell me that he's up to no good, and my instincts are never wrong. Come on! Let's get him before he has a chance to strike! There's no time to calm down. I'm just gonna... Oh no, the path he's walking down leads to the plaza where the kids play. There's no way I'm letting this guy get anywhere near those kids. <sighs> Kaspar, why did you disobey your professor? Uh, well, I... I am not seeking excuses from you. I asked because I want you to consider your actions and apologize for them. It just so happens that you were correct in your assumption that this man was a villain. If 
that were not so, he would not have chosen to take his own life upon seeing you advancing toward him. Great! So I was... But, because of your actions, that is all we know. There is no way for us to know who he was, what he was planning to do, or if he has allies lurking about. The only lead we have is a scorpion tattooed on his arm. If this indicates that he was a member of an underground organization, we have no way of dealing with it. Are you prepared to be held responsible if his group commits a serious crime? Oh, I couldn't possibly... Uh... What are you talking about, Professor? We didn't do anything wrong. Those kids might have been in danger if we didn't act. I couldn't just stand by and let that happen. Okay, Mercy. This time we're gonna be really good and get the supplies with no detours. You're so good at sticking to a plan. I should leave the shopping to you. I'll stay out of your way and just browse. Hey, that's not fair. I want to browse too. Looks like you girls are having a good time. Uh, Annie? Is this a friend of yours? I've never seen this person before. I'm sorry to be rude, but we're kind of busy. Wait a minute. I think you're shopping with money you stole. But no need to worry your pretty little heads. I'm just gonna have to take it back for us common folk. Step back, Mercy. This could get dangerous. Listen here, you. There's no way you can win against me. I don't want to fight you, but I will if I have to. So just back away. You think you can talk to me that way? I'm gonna... Oh, the knights are coming. What? Annie, run! <sighs> this is far enough. We should be safe. I hope so. But what were you thinking? That sort of behavior isn't like you at all. I just... I thought you were in danger, Mercy. You're actually blaming me for this? It's like I don't even know you anymore. Mercy! I was just trying to protect you. <laughs> It's decided. This meat is the best meat. Although the other inn has pretty great offerings as well. Ah, if it isn't Ingrid. What are you up to in a place like this? <gasps> Yuri! I could ask you the same. I'm just out to send a little money to my family. Gotta help however I can, you know. Oh, that's very nice of you. Forgive my tone earlier. You truly set a noble example. Right, right. Anyhow, looked like I interrupted you. You nearly choked on that wad of meat you were gnawing on. Oh, uh, right. That... that is true, I suppose. Hmm. You know, I... um... What is it you're mumbling about? Oh, um... nothing. Anyway, you once worked for House Row, didn't you? Four years ago, when I visited Count Roe at his castle, I swore I saw you by his side. Quite the sharp memory you have. You aren't mistaken. I was staying there then, yes. I had been adopted by the Count. Oh? Come to think of it, I thought I'd heard something like that. That the Count had adopted a distant relative of his. A young man whose future was both bright and promising. So, that was you? Yep. Although now, I'm nothing more than a distant stranger to him. Our ties were severed a while ago. He helped me out by getting me into the academy. It wasn't long after that that we started having all sorts of... disagreements. <laughs> what the hell were you doing visiting House Row anyhow? Ah, uh, yes. That. How to put it. It was to help... clean up after a friend. Ah, you speak of Sylvain. Mm -hmm. That must have been quite the mess you were cleaning up. Back to the point. What are you doing out here? Do you frequent this area often? Mind your business, won't you? I just like to go for walks. 
get fresh air, that sort of thing. Easy now. I'm not interrogating you. Really, I just wanted to warn you that it isn't so safe here in the evenings. You'll want to be on your guard. I thank you for your concern, but I assure you I can handle myself. Noted. Oh yeah, the innkeeper also wanted me to thank you. Hmm? He wanted to thank you for being such an enthusiast for the food he sells. Seemed pretty happy about it. <sighs> Is that so? How very... <sighs> well, I'd better be off. Seems she doesn't want anyone seeing her with a face full of food. Too late.